everybody. Welcome back to my Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name is Acacia. Today I'm going to be doing a 2015 wrap-up, which is called the Last Christmas Tag. I'm going to skip all the Christmas questions. I'm not done with Christmas, but I'm kind of sad that it's over, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, so this is just going to be books and talking about them, and you'll see how the questions work in a second, but we're going to start and jump right in with question number one. What book disappointed you the most in 2015 and there were two that really stood out to me the other books that were disappointments in the 2015 year I either didn't have good reads at the time so I didn't mark them as read and so I have actually literally forgotten about them and they've already been sold off my shelf or I just don't feel like mentioning them and giving you the time giving them the screen time so there's that. All right, book number one is Hussfrau, which is by Jill Alexander Espiam, and this is a advanced reader's copy that I found for $6 in a used bookstore in my, um, not my local area, but in my, in my state. Um, so this, I think I gave it three stars. I liked the writing style. I like the colors of the spine, because it's pink. And yeah, I <laughs> absolutely hated Anna, the main character. Um, usually I can read a book where I hate the main character, but this one, ooh, she pissed me off. Like, really pissed me off. She's having a series of sexual affairs with people to ease her own sufferings. She's extracting herself from these affairs and making them feel like crap. She's avoiding her children. She's having difficulty with emotions and stuff like that, which I understand, but still stop having sex with random people. Um, ooh, she, mm, I, I don't like her. I didn't like the book. I don't like it. I don't like her. I didn't like it. Okay. Second book that really disappointed me was Cinder. I was so bummed. I've already sold it because I found someone who wanted it really, really bad and I gave it to them for like five bucks. I wanted to love Cinder. I really wanted to love Cinder. I couldn't love Cinder. I was bored by the world. I was bored by the characters. I felt no connection to any of them. It was YA. YA is always tough for me because I don't always feel like I'm actually getting anything out of it, if that makes sense. I don't... No, that's not what I mean to say. That's not what I mean to say. Why is just difficult for me because I feel like I've read the stories before a lot of the time. Um, and Cinder was something so new. I thought, oh, absolutely, this is going to be wonderful. And it was going to be a way to get into fantasy. And it was going to just kind of tick a bunch of boxes off for me in terms of ways to kind of start my world. But it was a huge disappointment and vastly upsetting. And I, uh, my sister loved it. Um... Speaking of my sister, I've had somebody ask me about my sister because I mention her quite frequently. I have two sisters, one who is the youngest and she is living in a different state with her boyfriend and the other one who is my roommate <laughs> and best friend and adopted. She is actually considering starting a YouTube channel for body positivity and self-love and she wants to know if anyone would be interested in that. So if you would, let me know so I can tell her. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> she's a really sweet, wonderful girl, and she's one of the strongest people I've ever met. Um, the world that she comes from is very different from the world I come from, and I would love to see her kind of step outside of her comfort zone, because she doesn't usually do that. Um, back to Cinder. So she really liked Cinder, and then she listened to Scarlet on Audible, which I was kind of hoping that if I listened to it on Audible, I was like, oh, okay, I'll listen to it on Audible, and maybe that'll help didn't help. Um, I wanted to read the one from Rapunzel because everyone said Rapunzel was a little more emotional and I thought maybe that would help. It didn't help. So I ended up stopping. I actually gave all three books a solid college effort and uh, it didn't work. So sadly that was a huge disappointment for me in 2015 was that whole thing. Um, books I want to get to in 2016. I have a list a long list of books that I want to read in 2016 that are going to be released. But the three ones that I'm like, yes, these are definitely happening are The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. 
The Girl Who Couldn't Read by John Harding. And now I want to pick up Florence and Giles because someone can, um, compared it to Crimson Peak. And I really love that, except for one aspect of it. And if you haven't seen Crimson Peak, fast forward about 20 seconds, spoiler alert, the incest drove me freaking bonkers. Okay, moving on. Um, A Portable Shelter by Christy Logan. So those are the three books in 2016 that are like, yes, they're happening. Yes, I'm doing it. I have no choice. It's happening. All right. A book I read in 2015 with a pretty cover. Uh, hello? Do we, do we not understand that this is the only option of beautiful covers? Like, hello? And that goes all the way around. Like, you can't even, you can't make this stuff up. Whoops, dropping things. Yeah, so beautiful. So beautiful. Come here, baby. Fine, ignore me. See if I care. All right. Now, number four is a book that surprised you. And that would be... <laughs> there was kind of a couple different surprises happening here with this book. Deborah K. Davies, The Reason She Goes to the Woods. I actually found this one through Jen Campbell's channel. And I was like, absolutely, this is going to happen. And I ordered it through my local bookshop and my local bookshop now carries it. <laughs> I don't know why, but they now do. So actually they've done it with a couple of books that I've ordered through them. They now carry them. So where do I begin? Surprise factor of me loving it was pretty high. Um, I was expecting to like it, not love it. It wasn't a favorite of 2015, but it definitely was a love. Um, beautiful writing, phenomenal idea, um, but completely shocking in context as well. The things that it touches upon are not usually with things I'm, I'm, I consider being touched upon and Pearl, the main character, I, Loved her at some points in the book, and I absolutely wanted to smack her across the head and tell her not to do things at other points of the book, like when she's tormenting her little neighbor friend. And it, it's she gets very nasty and very sweet at the same time, and you can definitely tell that it's something learned. It's But, you know, then there's that whole, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Like, was she born a little bit nasty and then she was raised in a nasty environment so it got fed? Or did she learn nasty behavior from parents? I don't know. So... It it gets weird and it gets awkward and it's written beautifully and as a result you just don't know what to do. And there is, this is how each page is set up, it's almost like a chapter and then a page. Same thing. Um, you need this blank space because you have to be able to close the book and go, oh, and then open it back up. You have to. Otherwise, you're never going to get through this book. I got through it in a day. It's like 250 pages, but it's ended up only being like 125 because each page is blank on the other side. So um, I couldn't stop reading it. It was like, a, it was just so dangerous. I couldn't look away. So there was that. Now the next question is, which book made me cry? Another cover love, of course, which is Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. Cat being written by a raccoon. Rory the raccoon, who's a taxidermy raccoon, whom I love. Love, love. But Jenny, oh, Jenny. Jenny wrote a beautiful letter in here to those of us who suffer sometimes and have it a little tougher some days. And that's for everyone. But, uh, it connected very hard to me, and um, I sobbed uncontrollably <laughs> when she said thank you and said it's going to be okay and things get easier, but they don't, and blah, blah, blah. It was very honest. There was no sugar coating. Um, yeah, I sobbed. And I do need to pick up her Let's Pretend This Never Happened book. <sighs> I, I just, I have to. Um, I have no choice in the matter because Jenny is now a favorite author and can't help but love her. So Jenny, if you ever see this for some reason, know that you are very much loved. 
All right, and then number six in the final question, books that I loved, and I'm gonna do my honorable mentions, starting with Fishnet by Kristen Eanes, and this is such an important book. Okay, so this talks about a young woman who follows her sister who has been lost to the family for many years, who has found her way into the sex worker industry, and it talks about the sex worker industry in a very honest, upfront and bold way. Um, it's very clear that some people are in it because they want to be. Um, there's a lot of conversation about women who actually have a lot of control over the clientele they see um, and the use of condoms and the use of being safe. Um, there is some very strong female characters in here. There are some very nerve-wracking moments in here. There's some there's some fear, there's some, there's some very strong sisterly bonds in here, and it stole my heart. It really, it was something wonderful. I read it in two days. I needed to take a break during the night and read something else because it was just so emotionally draining to me, but not in a bad way, in a very wonderful way, and I was so happy I found it, and I actually thank Jean and Mercedes for that. So I will link both Jean and Mercedes channel down below. I believe they both did a um, independent review of this book and I will post both of them down below. If you want to know more of my thoughts, please let me know. I have a whole rant on that, but I'll keep it to myself for this video. Ernest Klein, Ready Player One. <sighs> This was such a good book. I am not a fantasy person. I am not a sci-fi person. And I don't play video games, but I like watching people play video games. So this actually played out very well in my brain. I almost put this into my books that should be a movie category. Or did I? I don't believe I did. Either way, it would be it would have to be done almost as if it was a video game. Like that's the only way it could be done. Right? Anyway, um, the references to the 90s and the 80s was just wonderful. I actually was super proud of myself when I got the Heather reference, Heather's reference, and I felt really excited. And uh, when it said Willy Wonka meets the Matrix, I was sold. So I read this in about two days during my family summer vacation at our family beach house. And I was asked quite frequently why I wasn't outside. So this is why I wasn't outside, because I was reading one of the best books that I've read in a very long time. And I keep trying to thrust it into other people's hands and no one listens to me. That's my real life, people. All right. <laughs> White is for Witching by Helen o o o Oyami. Oyami. And uh, she is now one of my top favorite authors. I have... Mr. Fox already. Um, I've read Snow Boy Snowbird, and uh, I need to pick up her new book that's coming out, which is a short story collection about keys. And Mrs. I believe it's Mrs. Ichabus. Miss Ichabus. The Icarus Girl and the Opposite House are the other two I need to pick up. I'd love to own all of her work. Anyway, this is Miranda. She suffers from pica. Um, it's a beautiful family story. It's really, a, it's, it's a wonderful way to kind of explore madness without outrightly stating it. And it's also a really magical realism-y kind of world in which the house actually has feelings and is causing fear and havoc in the family. And oof. If you haven't read this, I would pick it up. Um, the winter or Halloween time is best because it's definitely one of those dark curl up with a good something warm and just kind of sink into it. Um, oh, I really loved Miranda, even though she was completely crazy. And uh, her friend I did enjoy as well, but I really felt a lot for Miranda and I felt a lot more affection towards her, especially the feeling of guilt that she has, um, which you learn very quickly in the book that she and her twin brother, their mother has passed away and her brother was able to sense her mother's death and he told her to not open her eyes or, or something to that effect. He gave her an instruction 
of what to do to keep her mother alive and she didn't do it. And uh, she's forever feeling guilty for her mother's death after that. And uh, it slowly, ooh, it just, it builds and it builds. And then all of a sudden it hits you in the face and you're like, yes. And then this was my last one. Uh, this is Alec Thompson's The Book Collector. I will be picking up more Alice Thompson for sure. Um, Salt Press is now one of my all-time favorite presses along with Freight Publishing. Um, this... Oh, Violet. Oh, Violet. I, I, if you want a good book about madness, this is phenomenal. I mean, it, it, it takes hallucinations to the next level and you just feel like you're in the hallucinations. You're in her head. You're in her mind. You can't get out of it. It's crazy. It's dark. It's insane. It's wonderful. It's perfect. It's fairy tales meets gothic meets horror meets wonderfulness. And oh, I've read it now three times. I read it once, didn't like the end. I read it the second time, fell in love with it again, but still didn't like the end. I read it the third time and was like, okay, I can accept the ending. So after three reads, I feel like I've officially eaten this up enough times that uh, I feel pretty good about it. It's only 150 pages. So, you know, one read was not hard. So three days of my life I spent reading this and uh, I'm okay with that and I will read it again. So there you have it, my 2015 wrap up, the last Christmas book tag. Thank you to Why Mermaids. I will tag her down below, or I will link her down below to the video that she did of this. And then I will also be linking this video on her video so that she can show it to her people. And I am hoping to gain more of you and see you and meet you. And if you're from her channel, hello. And if you're not from her channel, it's fine. If you're already a subscriber, I love you. If you're not already a subscriber, I will give you hugs and tell you that I love you as well. Please join our little family in the chaotic little book corner. My name's Acacia again. I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.